If you're into profound stories that reveal the benevolence of Christ and the redemption of man, you've come to the right place. Today, we'll talk about the Apostle Paul, witnessing a seldom seen example of faith in human history. Finally, we'll help you answer a question of extreme importance that you might have asked yourself. Can a sinner reach the gates of heaven? But before all that, if you've landed here by chance, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell. Liking the video ensures that more content like this gets produced. Now let's get into today's video. While some claim to know the story of the Apostle Paul and many scholars discuss his importance, one detail remains unchanged. Paul is an example of divine forgiveness and a reminder of how we can restructure our lives when we choose to go in the right direction. He exemplifies how we are flawed but capable of overcoming the journey we tread and choosing a completely new path. Do you believe that someone from the people of God can become one of its greatest representatives? You need to learn more about the Apostle Paul and his courageous life. Paul was born in Tarsus, in Cilicia. To better understand the cultural environment he was part of, let's take a brief visit to this city, popularly known as the City of the Apostle. Tarsus is referenced several times in the Bible, sparking curiosity and admiration. There are several direct references to the location. Paul himself mentioned it in two distinct passages in Acts 21.39 and Acts 22.3. But where exactly is this city? This question is no mystery. It is located in Cilicia, as Paul himself revealed. It extends over a considerable distance from the Mediterranean Sea, concentrating on a portion of land 26 meters above sea level. Nowadays, if you walk through these biblical lands, you'll step into the southern region of Turkey. During the Roman Empire, this city was celebrated for its trade route and its population's financial and intellectual growth. Tarsus, throughout history, divides opinions. While historians struggle to establish precisely when the city emerged, its history traverses different times and passages in history and the Bible, revealing its complexity, beauty and sometimes simplicity. It is in this city that Paul is born and begins his journey, being the only point of agreement among scholars. Again, there is much speculation about his childhood. Some argue that Paul spent his entire childhood in the city until he left for Jerusalem in adulthood, while some studies claim that Paul spent a good part of his childhood in Jerusalem. Although born in Tarsus, if you browse through the pages of the sacred scriptures, you'll find a scarcity of information about Paul's whereabouts before his first appearance as a fervent persecutor of Christians, as Acts of the Apostles elucidates. Paul had an enviable cultural wealth and demonstrated an excellent command of the precepts of the Jewish school in Jerusalem under the tutelage of the infamous Rabbi Gamaliel. His uprightness and complete fascination with the laws quickly distinguished him when more Roman influence was entrenched, enjoying rights and fulfilling the duty as required. Paul received a burdensome task to persecute the people of God. Parallel to Paul's new designs, some changes were happening in Jerusalem. Christianity expanded as never before dragging a multitude of believers whose constant and seemingly unstoppable journey concerned Paul too much. The people elected Jesus with some relief as the Messiah they had long awaited. After the death of Stephen, the first deacon to recognize Jesus as the Messiah, Paul became a persecutor of Christians as he enjoyed prestige, rights and powers to do so, being a prominent member of the Sanhedrin. Not satisfied with increasingly violent persecution, Paul demanded that synagogues in Damascus denounce any follower of the Lord so they could be arrested and judged in Jerusalem. He began persecuting the churches of God with violence, going after men or women who followed the path he considered wrong and violated the laws he believed to protect. 
Although all of Paul's education was exemplary and his mastery of the laws was the most correct, there was, quite literally, a blindness preventing him from seeing all the evil he propagated. Want to know how this same Paul became one of the Lord's apostles? Increasingly dominated by an inexhaustible thirst for blood, Paul set out for Damascus. When he saw a strong light radiating from the sky, completely enveloping him with the light's exposure, Paul fell to the ground and still heard a deep voice questioning him. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Paul was incredulous and could only ask who was the owner of that voice when it suddenly answered him, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Still disoriented, he received Jesus' only commission, to enter the city and wait for someone in Damascus who would guide him in a new direction. From that moment on, Paul got up, but he realized he could no longer see. But how could it be that Paul, a persecutor of the people of Jesus, someone who now had a divine mission and a role to play in Christ's ministry, Perhaps it's one of those miracles or a mystery that only he understands. But what we can assert is that Paul was never the same after that day. With the help of his entourage members who witnessed everything in silence, Paul got up and continued the short walk, arriving in Damascus. He patiently waited for three days. His vision was completely compromised and he still hadn't recovered from the experience. He neither ate nor drank during that period. On the other side of Damascus, a disciple named Ananias experienced a similar appearance through a vision. The Lord asked him to go to a specific location and look for a man from Tarsus named Saul. In his infinite devotion, the man questioned the Lord about Paul's wickedness and his persecution of those who invoked his name. But the Lord reaffirmed Paul's importance as an instrument to spread his word among the people of Israel. It was Ananias who cured Paul of the blindness that afflicted him and baptized him, as Acts 9, 11, 16 reveals. This shows that, although Paul is not one of the twelve disciples, his importance was tremendous, and the Lord himself had a written, guaranteed, and aspired plan for him. His importance was indisputable. Another relevant point in Paul's conversion is that he never questions Christ's call. On the contrary, he faithfully follows his recommendation. Despite the blindness, he enters the city and patiently waits for three days. During this period, he drastically changed his way of acting, teaching the gospel to the people he swore to persecute. Paul also starts renouncing clothes and food to pray and dedicate his days to the Lord's interests. As someone who saw Jesus as an imposter, he recognized him as the Son of God so quickly. This is the unequivocal proof that God writes straight with crooked lines. After his conversion, Paul set out on his famous missions. First, he went to the people living in Arabia, staying there for a long three years. During his stay, he likely reflected on the new directions of his life and the burden he needed to bear to fulfill the plans orchestrated by the Lord. Upon returning to Damascus, the city where it all began, Paul preached the gospel with the same fierceness he used in his persecutions. But soon, he needed to flee from the Jews towards Jerusalem, a place he knew well. For a short three weeks in the region, Paul continued his pilgrimage, daily spreading the gospel and having to flee once again due to the persecutions he was facing. It seemed impossible to stay in one place for long, realizing that the journey would be long and full of winding paths. Paul decided to return to his roots, his hometown, Tarso. He stayed there until he was summoned by Barnabas, a disciple who had just arrived in Antioch. It was the moment of the greatest oral production of his missionary work expounding Christ's teachings and presenting Christian ideals and thoughts. It was in this moment of pure gospel effervescence that the disciples were first called Christians, as Acts 11.26 recounts. This is how Paul begins the most anticipated chapter of his life, the moment he was born. 
the first missionaries set out from the church in Antioch, carrying out the work ordered by God. These journeys were incredibly fruitful, advancing a little more with each newly converted region. Paul and Barnabas continued the pilgrimage for long distances, passing through distant lands, nourishing the people with the word of God, building churches and converting new members. They made their way back to Antioch, taking the opportunity to reaffirm doctrines and strengthen the faith of the converts. For a long time in that city, he rested. His importance was immeasurable, but there was an uneasiness in Paul, and that's how he embarked on his second missionary journey. This time, he revisited the churches he helped establish in Asia. Such was his devotion that he wanted to go further and discover still unexplored regions. Still, he was struck by some illness that prevented him from continuing an exhausting journey while waiting for a sign from God about what his next step would be. Paul had a vision in which a man from Macedonia called out for help. It didn't take long for him to set off towards Macedonia, beginning another chapter in his story. He preached the gospel far and wide, establishing churches. During his visit to Corinth, he produced two famous apostolic letters addressed to the Thessalonian church. Paul dedicated three years to his third missionary journey, a laborious but rewarding task. By this point, he had played a significant role in spreading the word of the Lord extensively. In Ephesus, for example, his preaching was formidable, resonating and amplifying through the eager crowd, discovering more about the Lord and his promises. In this fertile ground, Paul wrote the first epistle to the Corinthians, initiating a consecrated series of epistles that he would continue to produce in the following months. Towards the end of his journey, he decided to visit Jerusalem, the place where he had almost been killed by a mob. Despite strong protests, Paul was arrested and remained in custody for two long years until summoned for trial. Remember the privileges of a Roman citizen? One of them was the right to be judged by the emperor. His journey to Rome was immediate and turbulent. There, he was granted residence rights, as it would be a violation of existing laws for a Roman to be imprisoned without proper trial. Thus, Paul remained under close watch in Rome. Despite constant surveillance, Paul managed to convert the majority of the soldiers from the Imperial Guard, who took shifts and appreciated his knowledge of the Gospel. His presence became a consecration of the Christian people, and it didn't take long for him to be visited by the local population, both Jews and Gentiles. His house arrest, so to speak, had come to an end, and Paul did not rest. He set off into the unknown with his life's mission. Strong evidence suggests that he visited Western and Eastern Europe, writing more epistles. Now let's delve into Paul's epistles. They form a significant part of the New Testament and are essential to the Christian faith he defended. In his letters, Paul addresses various topics, providing guidance and instruction to the Christian communities he helped establish. Faith is a central theme as Paul teaches that salvation comes through faith in recognizing Jesus Christ as the sole Savior. Paul discusses ethical and practical issues faced by the Christian communities he founded, offering guidance on living a life that honors God and promotes unity and love among believers. His letters to the Corinthians, for instance, tackle issues like church divisions and recommendations for overcoming worldly adversities. Another prominent theme in Paul's epistles is the importance of communion, emphasizing the need for believers to support each other fully. Expressing gratitude for the Christian communities and encouraging believers to work together in spreading the gospel are recurring themes in Paul's letters. They are filled with practical wisdom to face the challenges of Christian life then and now. One of the most famous passages is from Corinthians 13, 4-7, where Paul beautifully describes the characteristics of Christian love. Love is patient, kind, not envious, not boastful, not arrogant, not rude, not self-seeking, 
not easily angered, keeps no record of wrongs, rejoices in truth, and bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. These are not just abstract claims. Some of these documents are physically preserved in their original condition to this day. Paul's letters are monuments of the Christian faith. The excerpt you heard earlier from Corinthians 13 is Paul's description of the attributes of Christian love, emphasizing its deep, humble, and altruistic nature. He begins by asserting that love is patient, highlighting its ability to endure difficulties and trials with calmness and profound clarity. This patience is like a gift for those who expect nothing in return for their good deeds. Paul continues his description, stating that love is not envious, revealing that the love experienced in Christ is not jealous, but thrives in the happiness of others without pride or pettiness. It is not possessive. Furthermore, he states that love does not behave improperly, meaning it does not act rudely or arbitrarily. Love does not seek its own interests, but cares only about the interests of others. Love does not cower or become silent in the face of evil, showing a willingness to forgive and forget offenses received. Paul brilliantly summarizes the nature of love by stating that it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. This means that love is persevering and unshakable even in the most difficult circumstances. Love is the foundation of all Christian virtues, and through it, believers can live in communion. Now, as the story continues, Emperor Nero accused Christians of a criminal fire, initiating a persecution similar to what happened in Jerusalem. In this violent atmosphere against the people of God, Paul was arrested again and taken for a new trial. However, this time, his condemnation was more tragic. Little is known about the last hours of the Apostle before his execution. As a man of devoted faith, it is believed that he prayed to the heavens and awaited his fate, knowing that regardless of the outcome, he would be with God. The exact location of Paul's execution remains a topic of fervent discussion. This would be the tragic end of the story if it weren't for us in 2024, celebrating the life, work, and passion of this man. To God, a persecutor turned propagator whose life serves as an example and a vivid reminder of God's plans. This tale brings joy for revealing God's mercy and clarity in his plans. No life cannot be touched by the divine experience it's a formidable life lesson that shows God's paths are often paved with tremors, but the final destination is sacred ground. Remaining steadfast in adversity and acknowledging our role alongside the Creator leads to a life filled with trials and tribulations. But one thing is certain. Victory is eternal. Paul's story will never be forgotten remembered as a man who gave up privileges to live an intimate life with God. Like many of us, Paul received a calling and did not shy away. In moments of greatest trial, he did not succumb, he grew stronger. His unwavering faith helped spread Christ's teachings as far as possible. He dedicated himself entirely to God's orchestrated plan, even until his last breath. It's essential to remember that the Bible is not merely an ancient book narrating epic and edifying stories. It's a book that helps us navigate the present, understand the consequences of the future, and sustain our decisions. This story brings joy by revealing God's mercy, His clear and unclouded plans, and the fact that only He can reach the condemned heart and bring light to the darkest soul. There is a plan for your life, and God has been writing your story since your birth. Choose the winding path that offers eternal life of unimaginable joys. After his conversion, Paul faced numerous hardships and persecutions. He was pursued and faced the wrath of the impure and unjust. He walked miles to establish churches in inhospitable and unknown places, but his faith remained unshaken, 
he wrote a significant portion of the New Testament, sharing his spiritual wisdom and encouraging believers to stand firm in their faith. As mentioned earlier, I invite you to read this extensive and deeply moving work. Paul's life is a reminder that, no matter how difficult the circumstances we face, with God as our compass, we can overcome anything. He reminds us that following Christ does not mean an easy life without obstacles, but the assurance that we have God to support us in the day and give us strength to carry exactly the weight he believes we can bear. Don't be alarmed if life pushes you in opposite directions and you find yourself at a dead end. Hold on to these words, strengthen your faith, and know that even Paul had to give his utmost and live a life far from what he desired. Our Lord, when invited, only questioned, and he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Acts 9.6 Showing that Paul did not clearly understand what the next step would be. He was physically and spiritually blind, but he knew he would have the comfort and care of Christ, and that alone was enough. Let Paul's example build up your heart and strengthen your family so that when you deviate from the path, you know there is mercy and a loving Father who believes in your salvation. May God continue to bless all of you until the next video. We have reached the end of our video, and I hope you like it. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment on the video. Continue watching videos about the history of the Bible. I will leave two recommendations here on the screen. God bless you. We will get to the next video.